Happy new moon and solstice to everybody. Um, winter solstice in the northern hem hemisphere and spring solstice for the southern hemisphere. Um, today is a really um, powerful day because it is a new moon and our winter solstice or spring solstice or whatever you are. So it's a great time to release and set your intentions for the coming new year that's just right around the corner. Um, I was feeling a pull today to do a reading for everyone. And so of course I'm going to call upon Archangel Michael and Archangel Gabriel and give these cards, my gay in cards, all of the love in my heart. And also um, set the intention for this spread to bring about the highest good for everyone. And hopefully it resonates with people. Um, so this is a new moon spread. And the intention for this spread is how can I best see the energy of this new moon to bring me into deeper personal wisdom. And these are Gaian cards. So I'm going to give it a shuffle and really concentrate and focus. Great, so five cards just jumped out at me and they're all face up, <laughs> so I guess this message is kind of important and I'll just lay them out and we'll see what they have to say. Alright, so this first card is Four of Earth. And the meaning of this card is, how can I best see the energy of this new moon in the east? And this is in communication, thought, information, intention, and meditation. So, four of earth, and I will just read to you what that one has to say. Bear with me, because this is like, this is a deck in which I don't play with very often, but I absolutely just love the messages that come through for they always resonate with me and I really hope that they resonate with you also um, and I feel like it just has a lot to tell us so once again um, this is how can I best see the energy of this new moon in the east so within communication in your thoughts information intention and meditation what is this new moon really wanting us to focus on. And so it was the Four of Earth, and it says here, On a beautiful autumn day, a gray squirrel pauses to nibble on an acorn as he gathers nuts and seeds to save for the winter to come. He is surrounded by a stash, a stash of acorns, and even more tumble out of an opening in the trunk of a maple tree. In Inuit culture, much like a cairn, of stacked stones often signifies safety, hope, and friendship. All qualities that can be hoarded. Here, the four stones represent an embodied prayer. You are building a structure for personal safety and security, wisely stewarding your resources. In times of plenty, you are saving up for the lean times ahead. You may want to start a practice of building blessing cairns. Each stone can represent something you're grateful for. The stack is a physical gratitude list. They can also represent prayers, you say as you stack the stones. The stones remind us of, of our connection to all that is, and to our soul's purpose. An affirmation for this card is, I am a wise steward of my resources. 
and I give thanks for the blessings in my life. How beautiful. Now, the next card is Child of Fire. And this one is how can I best see the energy of the new moon in the south? So in passion, in creative, creativity, energy, sexuality, and personal power. So the child of fire. So as you can see, like passion, when you think of passion, you kind of already do think of fire and like just that burning entity within. <laughs> And so this card is representing the child of fire laughs in delight at the flames of a campfire that dances and dazzles him. Humans have gazed into flames since the beginning of time, fascinated by the warmth, radiance, visions, and even danger the fire brings. Yet all of this wondrous discovery for each child who sees fire for the first time, his companion, the tabby cat, is as comfortable in the shadows as she is basking in the glow of the firelight. So this card, the child of fire is inspired and ready to make something happen. It's time to try something new. His enthusiasm makes a joy to be around and his eagerness to take chances is contagious. This person probably learns best by doing and thinking, why not go for it? There's a lot of laughter and playfulness coming into his life right now. And so the affirmation for this one is I jump at new op opportunities. So don't be afraid to follow that passion in which you have and those dreams in which you get, they have a deep purpose and it's really important that we do follow them and follow that intu intuitive guidance in which we receive. And so then you can create the things of beauty in which you desire to see in the world, which is really cool. You ha we all have this unique and incredible opportunity to birth, birth our love into this world. And yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, <laughs> sorry, getting a little sidetracked. Uh, the third card. It is, how can I best see the energy of this new moon in the West? In emotions, intuitive, intuition, dreams, sensuality, and compassion. So within your emotional realm, how can you best see the energy coming to you from this new moon? Oh. It's the explorer of fire. Very intriguing. How we're going to go from passion being a child of fire into being an explorer of fire but not fire in like a bad way of course follow those dreams let's see what the deeper meaning is of this one so it says here the explorer of fire spins her flaming orbs through the darkness making a pattern of dazzling light that arcs loops and falls her movements are as sensuous and sinuous as a serpent, and just as mesmerizing, she has practiced long hours to make her movements look effortless. But the skill of fire spinning requires her to be balanced, coordinated, flexible, and daring. She wears the mask of a fire goddess. In her trance state, perhaps she becomes one. As the flames whoosh around her, she enters the silence at the center of the circle. Fire dancers say that none of them ever escapes without being burned at least once. Fire consumes and transforms. It's dangerous, erotic, and hot. The fire spinner's ally is Salamander, who offers the gift of assisting us through our transformations and re-energizing us when life seems devoured of passion. So, there's more to this card, just so you know. <laughs> so, someone is playing with fire. What fast-paced, high-energy situation, situations are being ignited? Watch your dreams. Taking risks energizes 
This is a chance to entertain and dazzle. Share your enthusiasm and let the sparks fly. Creativity and eroticism can revitalize something that has become stale. The explorer inspires others by taking a bold stance. She is willing to ignore possible danger. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Moving quickly and fearlessly onto important issues she is passionate about. Be bold. Be bold with this new moon. Be your own leader. Now is the time to take courageous actions. And the affirmation for this card is, I dare to be transformed by the flames of passion and creativity. So don't be afraid to follow your dreams. You receive these dreams, these heartfelt dreams of love for a reason. And it's so vitally important for us to like root that love so deeply into the earth because we're all here for a purpose. We're all here for a reason. We all have these unique inspirations, ideas that are just like yearning to be heard essentially. And we all have that unique opportunity to let our lights shine. And it's just really important for us to nurture ourselves and each other within that self-empowerment aspect of life. So we can all support each other and just grow into this beautiful, just, ah, uh, just beauty. Um, and then, fire is really speaking to us. Passions, passions, passions. Yeah. <laughs> Start off the new year with you making a resolution to following your dreams and passions of beauty and stuff, you know. So, the fourth card is Elder of Fire. How can I best seed the energy of this new moon in the north? Instability, security, health, finances, manifestation. So, let's go see what the Elder has to say to us. I find it really interesting how, like, we're like, okay, so this, these are your resources and this is what you already have, which is when we're looking to like the external world as to what we do already have to play with essentially. And the child of fire, the new moon is telling us that, you know, like even though there's all of these other things that are out there already for us that are already created, you still have dreams within yourself. You still have these passions and creative energy that you're meant to use. And then the next step is following that emotional intuitive guidance to explore those passions and creativity within us as an energy that we can play with and enjoy essentially and bring forward. And then within our stability and security, the elder is speaking to us right now, which is really important stuff. Um, so the Elder of Fire is a healer squats on the earth in front of an altar honoring the ancestors during Los Dias de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. She holds a handful of burning herbs that directs waves of energy, dissipates the fowl, and bring in the sweet. She lives in La Epoca del Mito, the time of the myth, the other world, as much or more than she does in the world of consensual reality. Her gaze directed at the viewer is potent and challenging. She reminds us to open up to the other world, the world of energy, of patterns, spirits, and invisibles. When we shift our inner reality, our outer reality shifts as well. So really focus on your, your personal guidance internally. It's there for a reason. As well, her ally is Iguana, who brings the medicine of the dream time. So this elder has more for us to learn as well. The elder of fire doesn't sit back and accept things as they are, bringing us back to the four of earth. She embodies the power of transformation, her gifts of the shamanic and healing arts. She may use charms, spells, and incantations to facilitate needed change. So prayer is a very good thing, 
um, as well as meditation. Take your time to really center within yourself and focus on your own personal energy and frequency and really just get to know who you are internally as a being. It's really important, especially when we have so many things from the external world bombarding us and coming at us from so many different angles. It's really, really, really important for us to kind of like peel away those layers and just really go within. Um, but she is equally likely to use a pen, paintbrush, or a spoon and an old cook, cook pot. This is someone whose vitality and pride dignify, din dignity and accomplishments are powerfully attractive but they can intimidate as well. There is currently a chance to slip between the world and the other world, moving power and creativity back and forth between the two. Make things happen. So to bring about your sense of security, it's, it's all about you coming back to yourself and really, really following those dreams, those passions, that intuitive guidance. It's just, we're giving it to us for a reason and it's so important for us to follow it and the affirmation for this one is I am at home in the worlds of power and transformation so really just as intimidating as it is to follow your dreams yes there will be challenges along the way there's life throws us challenges but the thing is is that like it's really important for us to follow them and just really focus that energy and know that we can help ourselves and transform ourselves to become better essentially and grow and thrive together as humanity is meant to do. Um, yeah, so that's, that's really important. There's some great messages coming through right now and I'm really happy about this because it, it's really resonating with myself, and I really hope that it's also resonating with you. Um, and then we have the fifth card. And it came up upside down, so it's really interesting, because, like, when cards come upside down, they tend to mean, like, the shadow side of things, which, don't be afraid. <laughs> um, shadow side is essentially just, like, the internal work that we have to do within ourselves to really get to those dreams that are within us. Uh, and this one represents, how can I best see the energy of this new moon in the center? So the connection to spirit. And so that's really funny how it does come upside down. Um, and this one is the priestess. So let's go to the priestess. Bear with me. I'm just going to put this card down for a second so I can find the priestess number two. Okay. So the priestess really telling us to follow our dreams. And that's exactly how we get in touch with, with our spirit, with our creativity, our... This is, uh, this just for some reason is making me really happy, but um, it's really important for us to follow those, those, those dreams rooted in love and don't be afraid. There's, there is a voice sometimes maybe um, that can cause you fear that is like false evidence appearing real, but it's not actually real. And essentially is distracting you from actually really looking within yourself to figure out what your internal dreams are without having the pressures of the external world coming at you and making you feel either small or not worthy or anything like that. So yeah, follow your dreams is what it's saying for how can you really root within the um, your energy towards spirit with this new moon. And so the, the priestess is the woman of mystery calls upon us to turn within when the moon is waning. Listen, she says, to the voice of the wind. One second. Do. With its pungent, salty scent, listen to the voices that arise in your dreams or from your womb during the times of moon flow. She sits before the willow veil of the Hecate 
and hears the unspoken words of the owl and salmon. The sea behind her is illuminated by a waning moon. At her side is the sleeping goddess of Malta, who spends healing dreams, who sends healing dreams. In her hands is the ruby fruit of Persephone, a symbol of fertility, death, and sexuality. Is she maiden? Is she crone? She carries both within her, balancing the wisdom of age and her freshness of youth, and holds fast to the autonomy of both. Shh, the priestess whispers. Guard the mysteries. Constantly reveal them. And because this card came upside down, so it's when you read the shadow side of this card, it says, someone may be denying or devaluing non-linear irrational ways of knowing. So don't devalue your knowing. It is unwise to squelch your intuition and dishonor your feelings. Are you ignoring your dreams and the messages they bring? You or someone important you may be caught up in a delusion or illusion or spending too much time in otherworldly reality. Perhaps it is time to emerge from seclusion, reveal secrets, and be more active in the world once again. So what I am sensing from this is that we have these dreams that we're receiving and it's really important for us to not just simply dream about them and get lost within the world of dreams, essentially, but to really take those dreams and root them into our actual reality. And the affirmation for that card is, I know when to speak and when to keep silent. So that means just really meditate upon what you already have and what you can give to the world, essentially. And that's, yeah, it's... It's a really great, beautiful message I'm feeling, and it's important for us to share. It's really important for us to share, and we're all living, essentially, this waking dream, and it's important for us to recognize that and work together to create it to be the most beautiful, loving, peaceful dream in which we can really create it to be. And so... With that, I wish you all the absolute very best, love-filled, beauty, merry, happy holidays, <laughs> winter solstice, spring solstice, new moon, just, just namaste, namaste, and I really hope the, ve the very best for all of you. And if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that, just... Please feel free to send me a little message, comment box. Um, I will be happy to speak with you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.